with the structure you have over here. And it, over here is your digital twin. And if you don't reconcile this to this, how will the digital twin be a an actual twin of your business? <laughs> Jeff Winter yesterday uh, posted this. He said, according to this spring now, the winter's, winter's gone. <laughs> he said, according to IoT analytics, the market for digital twins expanded by 71% between 2020 and 2022. 63% of manufacturers are currently developing a digital twin or have plans to develop a digital twin. According to the IEEE, the digital twin concept consists of three distinct parts, the physical product, the digital virtual product, and the connections between the two products. That's not entirely... Um, it's not entirely true. There are three distinct parts, but the third part's not the connection between the two. The third part is the uh, analytics and UI layer that sits on top of the, the first two, okay? The first two of the stacks, but point taken. The connections between the physical product and the digital virtual product is data that flows from the physical product to the digital virtual product and information that is available from the digital virtual product to the physical environment. This idea can be divided into three subcategories according to the different integration level, namely the different degree of data and information flow that may occur between the physical part and the digital copy. So you got digital model, digital shadow, and digital twin. Okay, and the best way to think of this is twin is cloud, uh, shadow is like edge device, and digital model is IoT device. Okay, so if you look at if you, if you look at a, a typical architecture, that's what that really means. So the digital model is a digital version of a pre-existing or planned physical object. To correctly define a digital model, there needs there is to be no automatic data exchange between the physical model and the digital model. Examples of a digital model could be, but not limited to, plans for buildings, product designs and development. The important defining feature is there's no form of automatic data exchange between the physical system and the digital model. This means once the digital model is created, a change made to the physical object has no impact on the digital model either way. That is what we refer to as digital thread. That, so that is the, that it, when I talk about triangles and squares and circles, I'm talking, that's the, that digital model that you're creating. And that's probably the biggest flaw in the digital twin concept okay digital shadow right one way one way it only goes up right stack. so digital shadow is a digital representation of an object that has a one-way flow between the physical and digital object okay a change in the state of the physical object leads to a change in the digital object and not vice versa okay so in then digital twin if the data flows between an existing physical object and a digital object and they're fully integrated in both directions this kind of constituted the reference digital twin a change made to the physical object automatically leads to a change in the digital object and vice versa. Okay, so that third thing is not true. A digital twin is not an, a real-time representation of the physical reality. And the reason why is because we preform the digital model. We create a thread that moves in one direction, okay? So somebody actually posted and said, hey, Walker, uh, I can't remember hearing your thoughts on this subject. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my discussion about digital twin. Everyone who is building digital twins using what is what Jeff has described here from the IEEE is wasting their fucking money. Okay. You are wasting your money. The simple reality is is that your digital infrastructure needs to be an actual reflection of the physical reality on the plant floor. Okay, not an abstraction a reflection. What you do is you take the actual reality on the plant floor and you map it to models. So what you end up with is red and blue. Red is the digital model. It's the, it's the, uh, it's the object that's used all throughout the higher you move up your digital stack. It, the, that model is used over and over and over and over again. Okay. The blue stuff is the stuff that's not modeled. It's the ad hoc thing, okay? It's the, it's the part that doesn't fit into the model, okay? But the, the point is, is that in a digital infrastructure, you use both. You use the part that's modeled and the part that isn't. 
And the thing that needs only model data only consumes the red stuff. Okay. What is the argument here, this, this post here about digital twin, and I, I use the Accenture example all the time where Accenture was in, by the way, a Microsoft company, <laughs> Accenture is in and they are pitching digital twin for a big organization. Okay. I was hired to pick poke holes in what Accenture was doing. And I told you this whole story about, I went up and I said, okay. And I drew a big circle in the middle of their architecture. And I said, how are you going to reconcile what you have here, the structure you have here with the structure you have over here? And it, over here is your digital twin. And if you don't reconcile this to this, how will the digital twin be a rep- an actual twin of your business? And the architect was like, he gave the, he punted. He said, oh, we're going to have engineers. He said, he said, we're going to talk about that tomorrow morning. I said, oh, how convenient. Why don't you just tell me now? You know, why don't you tell me how it is you achieve that? And so what I did was I pivoted and I said, okay, give me one example of a client you have where this architecture is the foundation of their digital infrastructure today and they are satisfied. Just give me one. (laughs) Oh, I can't share that client. Oh, it was fucking crickets, man. All the Accenture people in that room, because they knew they were the, the, the couple of the, they were so pissed. How is it though that Accenture is owned by Microsoft? I didn't know that. Uh, that uh, Accenture is fucking huge, dude. Yeah, they're, uh, hold on, let's look them One up. One of the three big consultings, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah they're, well, they're right they're, up there with uh, they're Deloitte Microsoft. and. They're a Microsoft company, I think. Hold on. Really? I thought they were a Microsoft partner. <laughs> Because then at some point, if, if Accenture is owned by Microsoft, recommending Microsoft products with other Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft a big has an here. investment. There's a, there's, uh, some, there's, there's, some, really. there's some formal relationship between them. Hold on. Let me find it. And if I, I thought it was that they were certified cloud experts and all that kind of stuff, you know, Microsoft plus Accenture. Oh, here's yeah, Microsoft index. Yeah, it's the Accenture Microsoft Business Group represents the largest partner investment. Yeah, well, I know. I know Microsoft's big. It's two and a half trillion dollar company. There's so many companies within Microsoft that we don't even know about. You know, it's, like, uh, right there. It's uh, Microsoft and Accenture have some business relationship that was formed in 2000. That's what it is. They they have a joint venture called Avanad. Avanad Microsoft Partnership. Yeah, A V A N A D. There's a, there's a formal, you know, like where they're business partners. Yeah, business group. Yeah. But we all know that Microsoft, if you're a business partner with Microsoft, that means Microsoft owns you. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, what are you going to do? Right. But I, I want to, when it comes to digital twin, okay, digital twin, there are, there's real value. I actually think that having a digital twin is, is incredibly value for, valuable for an organization. But the, what is what is proposed here doesn't get you to digital twin. In fact, it literally is a roadmap for how not to achieve it. Okay. When it says that there is no connection between physical connection between model and, and, well, and asset. Because he mentioned that third element, the third element, the it's connection well, between the two. It goes in one direction, right? Go ahead. Well, even if the flow is going in both directions, if it's a point to point connection, that's not, you know, he said, and a connection between the two, the whole focus of our content is that connection between the two is the, is the important part of your infrastructure, not let me link all of my physical objects to a digital twin in a standalone environment, which it didn't seem like he really focused on that part. Well, let's use, let's use this example. What is the twin of your business? All right. So let, let me ask you that. So if I create a digital model, which is a digital model of a physical asset, okay, and that digital model of a physical asset is made up of digital models of other physical assets, so subsets, cells, mm-hmm. make up a production line, okay, where do I put things like um, uh, attributes and parameters that are a function of the relationship of two different digital models? It'd be like a third ancillary model that's like, like it's like a it's like a link. Uh, in SQL, we have these that are like a, you know, just a connection table. Like, right? Would, would, it, would it? Would it? It would be a third object that's like a relationship object 
and the parameters between of that relationship are defined in that third object. So you'd create a digital model for every relationship. I don't know, or maybe it's a maybe it's a sub attribute of each model, like uh, connected models, or you know. One of the advantages. Know, one of the advantages of the unified namespace, and when we talk about it, it's the structure and the events of your business, is the structure means something. The structure creates relationships. Uh, yeah, because it's contextual. Where right. is it in the namespace? Right. Yeah. It's par parent, child, uh, 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 group, parameter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just put it as a sibling, either as a standalone tag or as some. Right. How do you do that with just digital models? And the answer is you don't. You don't actually end up getting there. You end up, it, I mean, there, it's going to be n, n to the 13th power digital models as you, or it's going to be n to the 6th for sure, right? It's going to be n to the 6th digital models if there are six layers on an automation stack. Right. The answer is, is that if you look at any organization's digital twin, one of the first things that you'll notice is that'll blow, that'll stand out at you. Number one, this isn't real time in any way, shape or form. It's a, it's nothing but a model of the business. Okay. And th that means I could create, I could run like simulations and stuff against it, which is one of the big strengths of digital twin in my opinion. Okay. And number two, there's a lot of gaps here. There's a lot of parts of our business that are not represented here. There's a lot of it, there's a lot of inf data and information that's not represented in this twin. And when you ask somebody, well, where is X or where is Y? They're always going to come up with some reason for why it's, it's not there. It's either in some spreadsheet because it's because they never had they never had their leader send out the Jeff Bezos email saying all communication will be done through services, you know, correct. Not doing, you know, and then you would have it if you organizational had that digital strategy then you would see a lot more of their business represented in their digital infrastructure. Yeah.